Who wants to start us what off? What kind of camp was, was Marcus Kemp having? And we'll just talk about him a little bit. Uh, you know what, Marcus was having a, a, a hell of a camp. Obviously, you hate to see good kids get hurt. He brought a tremendous amount of value to our organization because of all the things he bought on special teams. But on top of that, he was developing into a hell of a receiver. And so the thing that you hate, obviously, is when any player gets hurt. But one thing that we're going to miss, we're going to miss the production that, that Marcus Kemp provided for us. Dave mentioned it, that it's, you know, with him going down, that it seemed right to bring DeAnthony back for special teams. Obviously, we've seen what Andy and you have done with him on offense. Just where are you going to try to get him some reps to get him maybe prepared for the regular season over these next few weeks? Uh, I, I'll say this. DeAnthony's a football player. He fell right in yesterday. If you guys were out here yesterday, you had an opportunity to see him jump in and take a few reps. He's been without organization for a number of years. He knows the culture. He knows the system. He understands how we do things. So it's important to get somebody back, but also somebody that can bring some juice. This kid loves to play football. He loves to practice. He enjoys it. That's the type of people and character that we want. Yeah, it, as a coaching staff, it, it looked like you guys or felt last year that you guys were disappointed with when, when he went down with an injury that into this season. Is there optimism and sort of an idea that you are bringing a guy back who obviously knows the system but can provide something that maybe was sort of lost towards the middle, towards the end of last season? DeAnthony provided a lot of depth in a lot of different positions last year for us. And uh, obviously it hurt watching him go down, but you know what? In this profession, things happen. And when someone goes down, the next man has to, 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 to seize that opportunity. And unfortunate, it happens in this in industry, but now it's his opportunity to come back and reestablish himself as the productive player that he once was. Patrick talked a little bit yesterday about getting out of sync with the first team. So what are you looking for on Saturday? I'm looking forward to watching our guys get back in sync and in rhythm. I want to watch them handle the sudden change. I didn't think we did a good job of handling the schedule uh, of last week collectively as a group. Uh, one thing I think that we've, uh, with that happening, through some bad times, you can always find some good things. And by experiencing that schedule being pushed back, having to start over, hit the reset button a few times, I think it's taught us something. And so we got to make sure that we're, we're living up to expectations by eliminating the, dis, uh, the distractions. Let's make sure we stay focused, stay poised. The rest will take care of itself. But what I am anticipating is that we come out and play hard and play focused together. In regards to the, the screen game, you've had a lot of experience over your years in that too. But when you came to Kansas City, what is it about Andy that approaches it differently? And how much more understanding do you have of the screen game working with him? I was blessed and fortunate to run a few of those screens. So, <laughs> uh, just having an idea how teams play you. Um, you want to make sure you're taking advantage and neutralizing what they bring to the table as far as a defensive pass rush. But uh, we just want to make sure that we're utilizing all our guys in the right way. We got a number of players here who can run screens. We got a quarterback that can drop it off anywhere. We got a no line that's doing a heck of a job of protecting and making sure they're releasing on time with those screens. So, one thing that I've learned is just. Sometimes you, you, you have good plays and sometimes you have bad plays, but our guys understand the essence of what we're trying to accomplish when we're running our, sc our screen game. What are the signs that you see from Cole that make you think, okay, this could be an offensive contributor potentially early in the season if you want to? Uh, he, he shows flashes. He shows a lot of flashes. Obviously, the kids have, he has a tremendous talent. He can catch the ball very well. One thing that doesn't get talked about enough is this football IQ. The kid is very, very intelligent. He's learned every position and that not every kid comes in the system and learns every position that fast. And on top of that, he's blessed with speed. The thing is, is just understanding the level of urgency that is demanded and needed every single day that you're here. And so that's just a, a process that he has to learn. And he's doing, a, he's doing a heck of a job. So from day one to where he is now, He's come a long way, and we're, we're expecting him to continue to, to progress the right way. Coach, when you, Coach, when you get out of here, um, talked to one of your contemporaries this morning, Kimball Anders, and uh, he just got to doing an internship with Tampa Bay. Uh, just talk about, of course, the French Potter Alliance and the Bill Walsh stuff to where it's helping minorities, especially former players, uh, with that internship and trying to help get them into the coaching ranks here at the, in the NFL. Well, kudos to Kimball. Uh, Kimball was a hell of a player, first of all. <laughs> But uh, kudos to Kimball. But uh, the, I, I actually had an opportunity to do an internship with the Philadelphia Eagles. The internship, I mean, it opens up 
many doors and avenues to, to, to building bridges and connections in this industry. And so it's a great process for young minority coaches to get involved in, but also it's just a great process to give coaches, good coaches, an opportunity to basically show what they're about. And so the Bill Walsh Minority Internship uh, Program is a, is, a, is a great deal. We actually have a, do a heck of a job. Greg Lewis does a heck of a job here, and also Coach Reed uh, in discovering some young up-and-coming coaches that, that have participated in our, uh, with our program here over the past few years. Hey, what's, it been like to work, work, what's it been like to work with Greg Lewis, given that he's also a former player and he sort of came up along the same time you have? Greg does a heck of a job. First of all, Greg is a great teacher. He's a great teacher, but also, too, he's a former player that understands you know, what it took to make it to the level of play that he played at. But on top of that, he provides a lot of leadership to his room. He understands the importance of getting to know each and every individual, but also the importance of understanding that every player learns and takes that information differently. So he, he has a great skill set to communicate in making sure that he's providing necessary information that's going to reach each and every individual. Greg's doing a heck of a job. Eric, it seems like with Darwin Dar Thompson's made the most of his touches, but what more can he do? What, what more do you want to see before this thing gets real? We want to see continual gradual improvement. And he'll tell you there's a lot of little things that he needs to clean up. It's always the little minute things that can keep you from feeling as good as you want to. He's a competitive kid. He comes out here, he grinds every day. He grinds in the classroom. He wants to be the best that he can possibly be. Coach Dillon is doing a heck of a job of making sure that he's staying humble and staying focused. And at the end of the day, we want him to make the most of the opportunity or any opportunity that's being presented, whether it's in the backfield or being out there on special teams.